while we wait confirmation that we are live that should be coming nice hi everyone this is chicho today is january 26 2020 and we're doing a math live stream open discussion let's do some mathematics and this is the first one we're doing for the 2020 year and i think what we're going to do from now on is uh, just number them according to the year we won't go school starting year we'll just we'll just go with the calendar year and we've done a fair bit of these uh, so far i think we started these about a year and a half ago or two years ago when we started doing uh, live streaming on twitch maybe a year and a half ago we started doing the mathematics i think we started on twitch a couple of years ago live streaming and uh, math kicked in soon after so um business as usual uh, i'm basically making myself available for a couple hours on a regular basis to help people uh, with their math questions uh, specifically fo focused around high school mathematics a little bit of elementary as well early childhood education I'm, for the last handful of years i've actually been getting a fair bit of clients coming to me from that realm as well and i've been working with a fair bit of students uh, for early childhood education teaching the basic operations and how to move around an equal sign and stuff which i do in high school as well but i'm starting to work with uh, kids that are younger uh, less than tween right uh, so less than 10 years old and stuff i've been working a fair bit uh, and i also do a little bit of post-secondary education um, and that's usually the questions that are coming in we are getting a fair bit of people coming in uh, for calculus help but uh, i haven't got around to reviewing relearning all of my calculus to be able to teach it properly um, so that's the nature of the beast so we're going to do everything other than calculus and hardcore statistics even though i do have some um, or well i've had a handful of stats students as well over the years but uh, i don't encounter it on a yearly basis for me to delve into it deep right uh, and we will create a whole series for calculus and uh, statistics at some point void how are you doing welcome welcome mask of raven welcome welcome i knew you were gonna pop by for the mask stuff right on right on fun fun uh it's been like I think over a month that we did one of these right sleepy waves welcome welcome king tom how are you doing hope you're okay chichon doing better this uh trying to get back on my feet with this flu virus that's been going around and man i've never been kicked this hard before really like i still have the cough the chest low energy and i'm doing everything and anything trying to get myself back to full spirit production mode and it's a slow uphill take it's incredible never been hit that hard or this hard anyway dante how are you doing can't resist the mass stream yeah not with you brother <laughs> i tried to i was i was going to start doing these earlier but i just didn't have the energy the talking capacity and stuff like this so i'm glad we're back at it we'll see how this goes i'm not sure if i'll last a full two hours but we'll try we'll try okay I was just chatting up on the last personal finance video when I saw you went live. Nice, nice. Like catching up, not chatting up. That was a good stream. I'm going to upload that video most likely tomorrow to uh, YouTube and BitChute. Okay. I might do it later on tonight. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I was, uh, that stream, I was actually trying to take into my video editor. I downloaded it from, uh, just, just to let you guys know what I end up doing. Uh, I watched the whole stream and I put timestamps, some of the timestamps, and because we jump around a lot, uh, it it's a little chaotic, right? So I put some timestamps in there, and what I end up doing usually, not always, uh, Atmik, how are you doing? Hey, it's been a while, it's been a while, Atmik, over a month since we did a math stream, right? Glad you popped by. So what I usually do, I watch the live streams, and I if I think there's stuff in there that I can take out and make little short segments and load those on youtube and the full live stream on bit i do that if it's political and stuff the personal finance math stuff they all go on youtube as well and i do usually cut up the math stuff but when i took that personal finance video into my video editor 
because I'm not sure why uh, sometimes this happens the audio was not syncing up with the video so I'm not gonna mess around with that so I'm not cutting up that live stream personal finance live stream into you know at least take out a couple of segments because I wanted to take out a couple of segments and put some of the stuff that we talked about just cut them up and put them back to back with edits inside so it's one coherent thought uh, I'm not gonna do that it was just gonna be so much work to do it right um, so it's it was a nice personal finance stream I liked it it was a nice conversation dolphin how are you doing hey chicho what's happening just chilling on a Sunday let me show you my snacks I'm still loading myself up full of vitamin C right so I've been popping a vitamin C pills someone recommended zinc I've been popping zinc pills I'm eating mandarins and I'm eating uh, what do you call it uh, grapefruit I've been munching on grapefruit right nice and it's really good grapefruit right and it's like look at that look at the juiciness of that thing right fantastic it's got a little bit of bitter taste but it's really good it's so refreshing got some dark chocolate dark chocolate and grapefruit really you can't go wrong with that right citrus and grapefruit got myself some kombucha got some tea got some water <laughs> loaded up you gonna buy fruit now awesome dolphin the fruit is good man the fruit is amazing there's one unofficial case of corona thing in quebec man i i'm not going out <laughs> Boy, there's one in toronto and i'm pretty sure there's one in richmond in vancouver right this thing is going to grow it's exponential growth we can do a graph of it right like what i'm looking at and we don't know what the official the official numbers and the real numbers who knows right but right now all we can do is go with the official numbers and <laughs> based on the official numbers the number of cases is doubling every 30 hours or so right so we can do a graph of it you said that money is laundered through banks and art and uh, institution how so oh sleepy waves it's so so uh in depth right through banking it should be obvious like um for example look into hsbc bank that got fined basically for me and you it'd be me and you being fined like 10 cents over a year salary right so for us the numbers look big right they got fined like a hundred million dollars right but that's equivalent to me and you being fined 10 cents by the government they got fined a few million dollars right for laundering drug cartel money from mexico in their mexican branches right they they lost the case like they got fined the u.s government fined them so that's the most direct one you can look at hsbc drug cartel funding money like it's all over the place all of these banks every bank that i well not every bank but most banks hsbc is one of the worst they they get fined for laundering all kinds of money right the art thing is more complicated to a certain degree um i'll do a little graphic let me just get caught up with the with the chat there isn't that much chat but i'll do a little graphic for you how uh art stuff is being uh money laundering is going through there right right lonely piggy how are you doing hey chicho today marks another hard one for 2020. oh i heard about that uh, and his daughter they in a helicopter crash right kobe bryant and his daughter i didn't realize his daughter was on there man heartbreaking i heard about that yeah the helicopters like i've flown around in helicopters uh helicopters in terms of flight things that you can fly in i haven't looked into balloons hot air balloons or zeppelins and stuff but helicopters and planes helicopters are their risk of crash is much higher than planes much higher than float planes as well right so i've flown around helicopters uh doing my geophysics uh years right 
and uh, man they hit a pocket Whoop, right so helicopters are it's beautiful mind you flying around in a helicopter if you get the opportunity in a nice terrain where you know you're not going to get whoop, right it's amazing when you sit or sit on a helicopter and you have a bubble glass bubble around you and you just look down and you see yourself flying over a terrain it's amazing uh, but it is sad news anton how are you doing by the way uh, for those of you who are following and subbing uh thank you very much for the follows and the subs just in case i don't catch them okay afternoon chicho the kobe news is awful it is it is i didn't realize his daughter was on there 13 year old daughter yeah a teammate of hers also as well oh another 13 year old kid damn as well as their parent oh horrific 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 fast car how are you doing good day chicho sorry for joining in during such a painful discussion rest in peace kobe uh, and his daughter yeah and the rest of the people right um nature of the beast like personally um i flew around a lot until 2002 i haven't gotten on a plane a helicopter since 2002 i haven't left the west coast of bc since 2002 uh, I sort of got done with traveling it's exhausting right what are we discussing today um, mathematics you're definitely welcome if you have whatever we're talking about uh, by the way whatever we're talking about feel free to interrupt with a math question or a math discussion but here's uh, there's one question that came up and this is sort of math related right uh, we'll do the coronavirus here uh, I'll show you the corona. Actually, let's do the coronavirus before we do. Uh, I just want to show you what, it's, what it looks like, right? Uh, just so everyone gets a feel. I'm pretty sure everyone here has a good feel for it, how exponential growth works. But we'll just do a little simple graphic of that, and then we'll deal with the money laundering through the art community, right? So from, from what I understand, I'm sort of following this because it's interesting to me. I like post-apocalyptic movies comic books just science fiction on that level and uh, as soon as you see a government putting dirt on highways to close off 35 million people you start thinking zombie apocalypse right fast car tomorrow i begin the last math class i should ever have to take it's just basic college mathematics luckily an english degree requires little math beyond that nice and by the way you're welcome to come by and you know if you don't understand the concept we'll definitely go through it i certainly wouldn't mind taking more math if you were my teacher <laughs> awesome fast car so take a look at this so coronavirus is doubling every 30 hours or so the number of cases that are being reported right this can't get enough of chicho's math <laughs> nice. so take a look at this zero mm -hmm. how many days are we in it's three weeks four weeks is it around four weeks fast car congratulations but make sure you keep practicing math because it keeps you sharp i agree with uh, herbold two weeks isn't it so it's two weeks into the coronavirus so that's 14 hours right so it's not 14 hours 14 days right around four you're right around four weeks okay four weeks so four times seven is 28 so we got 28 times 24 right four times eight 32 2 3 uh, 8 11 0 16 1 8 4 5 5 so 2 7 6 so we got 672 hours into the coronavirus the first reported cases right or acknowledged cases right for sure I'll I'll make sure to study simple math on my own statistics but statistics especially right so let's assume we're into 672 hours right so what we can do is we round this up make it 700 right so we're just gonna put 700 there if we're putting 700 there we're gonna split this up into 500 increments right so if we go in the middle that's 3500 or 350 so 350 if we're going 500 so we can't go in the middle right so what do we need we need um, 
not 500 increments. Should we do 50 increments? Oh, let's just do it in the middle. So um, what are we going to do this in? 350, this doesn't work out nice. Let's make this 800. I just want to make it nice. My mind is a little mush still, okay? Uh, so let's make this 400, okay? We make this 200, we make this 600, right? And then 100, 300, 500, 700. Oops, 700, right? Hours. So how many cases of coronavirus acknowledged are there? From what I understand, there's a few dozen acknowledged deaths, and it's a 3%, 2 to 3% kill uh, or death uh, outcome, right? So out of 100 people, 100 people, three die, right? We call this cases, uh, three dead, die. If, if this is too morbid, by the way, let me know. We'll stop talking about it. But it is what it is, right? I don't know how many cases there are right now. I lost track. I think it was like, was it 2,000, 4,000, 5,000? Let's make it 6,000, right? Let's put 6,000 here. 6,000 here, right? This will be 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, right? So we were at 676 cases, 50, 50 death, I believe, 50 death. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So 50 death, right? So we can figure out how many cases there are by just doing cross multiplication, right? So if you have 100 over 3, right, for every 100 cases, 3 die. That's 3% death rate. If there's 50 death, right, we can figure out how many cases there are, right? Cross multiply. You got five times fifty times a hundred is five thousand. I usually do this with my students, but here we'll do it again. You can cross multiplication. I I usually always when I teach cross multiplication, I follow through. Later on, once I've done it a few times, people figure out that you really don't need to bring the three up because you got to divide by three again, right? So x is equal to what's fifty thousand divided by three, right? Four, four or five thousand divided by three. Four thousand five hundred would be fifteen hundred, right? So I'm pretty sure there's more than fifteen hundred cases. So let's assume there's two thousand cases already. Okay. So this would be three. We can do the long division, right? Three goes into five once. Three minus two. Bring this down. Zero six eighteen two zero six zero six so according to 50 deaths approximately 50 deaths we got 1666 Ooh, crazy number right <laughs> 1666 zombie apocalypse is here right the virus is deadliest for elders children and pregnant women is that uh, i don't know about the pregnant women i know for and and anybody that's already sick like for me that i'm coming out of a flu it wouldn't be a good idea to get the coronavirus because my, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, my system is already compromised a little bit, right? Uh, my my mind is mush. Like I can't even think about the right words, right? So um, my immune system is already compromised. So anybody that's already sick is more uh, prone to it. Uh, like I'm pretty sure the 3% is across the board. It's not 3% for children or the elderly i'm pretty sure the rate is higher and one thing i read today there's six <laughs> divine numbers immune immune system thank you uh void uh from what i understand if we have a three percent uh, uh death uh rate for a virus that's about the average on a serious virus right from what i understand if you go above 20 20 percent or more that's serious problem huge right so this thing so far from reported cases or acknowledged cases and again we can't 
confirm any of the numbers right we're going by what's being said and we don't want to go into the realm of speculation and random videos we've been finding and random little tweets and articles and stuff we can't go by go with hearsay it will find out soon enough what the numbers truly are right give it a couple of more weeks and we'll see what happens right but let's assume instead of just to keep the numbers simple right we're into four weeks so let me erase these guys let's put some of our numbers up here that we're actually dealing with right so time uh, cases so time we're gonna put time here cases and death so time after 672 uh, hours right is it seems a little low but it is 672 that's what we did for four weeks right we got two, let's say 2,000 cases and 50 deaths okay approximately hey chicho olive how you doing we're doing morbid math right now we're looking at the coronavirus and trying to do a graph to see what exponential growth looks like right so 672 hours 672 that's 700 so we're here and we're at 2000 right and here's the thing with exponential growth graphs right let me give you a graph here uh, da -da 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 -da. here is an exponential graph right now if you take if you look at the graph from here to here that still looks linear if you look at the graph from here to here that still looks linear if you look at the graph from here to here that still looks linear right and what happens with an exponential growth is depends on the timeline you're looking at how dramatic that exponential growth is going to look right so if you take something for an extended period of time it's been having exponential growth you're going to see it's called a hockey stick whoop in canada anyway where you see the graph going like this is crazy right so right now we're at the beginning stages of the coronavirus right so at 672 we're at 2,000 cases every 30 hours let's call it a day I guess but 30 hours the numbers are doubling so minus 30 this would be 600 and um, ba -ba 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 -da 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 42 642 we're at 1,000 right another 30 hours 602 hours we're at 500 so you can see what this looks like right my graph is very tight so if we do this this thing is looking like this and here's the thing with exponential growth at some point the jump is huge right like your time frame just goes crazy so if we add another 30 hours here we go with our estimation that the virus is going to double every 30 hours take a look at this so let's put some data here at this it was a thousand cases and 25 deaths so we're at the 2.5 percent right between two three percent death rate so we're at two and a half percent right now right at 602 hours it was 500 cases this would be 12 let's round it up to 13 deaths right if we add 30 to this we're at 702 hours 702 hours this should be 4,000 confirmed cases and there'll be a hundred deaths how come this went down to oh yeah because it's that okay another 30 hours 732 hours 732 we're at 8,000 cases and we have 200 deaths 762 hours we're at 1600 cases 16,000 cases we're at 400 deaths oops 400 deaths right so let's graph this at 702 we're at 4000 at 732 we're at 8000 so 7 8 right at 
762 hours, we should be at 16,000. 8, 9, 9,000. 10, 11, 12,000. 13, 14, 15,000. And 16,000. So here, we're here. This is what we're looking at, right? <laughs> it's snowing, uh, snowballing effect. Holy geez, holy geez, right? So this is two weeks in. We go two weeks in. We're at. 2,000 cases, right? Two weeks, 672 hours onto 762 hours. Oops, I gotta subtract the other way. Sorry, let's subtract the other way. 762 minus 672, 0, 6, 16, 9. 90 hours. This is how I track the value of my magic to gather collection wacky how you can track something like an illness with the same map exactly right comic books same deal right at, and at some point when something goes like this especially in a semi-log scale if it starts going exponential logarithmic graph semi-log graph it's going to burn itself out it's just going to crash right math saves lives <laughs> right so 90 hours in two weeks in 672 hours we had 2000 cases in the next 90 hours we're gonna have 2000 minus 16,000 14,000 cases that's what we're seeing here from there to there right so this amount of time 14,000 this amount of time 2000 what's gonna happen in next 30 hours so if we go 792 before 8000 da, 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 double it 32000 right and this is going to be 800 deaths the, the crazy thing with exponential function is you go back one level it's things look okay as compared to where you are now right Rendell, thank you very much for the subscribe to tier one. Thank you very much for the sub, brother. Just stopping by to say hello. Time to sleep. Have a great stream. Okay, Rendell. Sweet dreams. Sorry about the morbid math. We should have done happy math for nice, sweet dreams, right? This I've been keeping an eye out for. It's the number of confirmed cases that uh, is going to decide, and it's spreading right at least two cases in the united states at least two cases in canada uh, i believe anyway i think it's three there might only be one last time i checked i think on the radio it said one but i think richmond is in toronto is in and from what void says uh, montreal is in as well right uh asia who knows right um Europe, who knows? United States, who knows right now? Vancouver, I, I would keep my eyes on Vancouver because of Vancouver gets a huge influx of uh, people coming in from Hong Kong and China. Vancouver is a hub for that connection, right? Uh, in terms of money laundering and in terms of traffic, right? And in ter terms of trade, right? Vancouver is the hub. So where I am, <laughs> Vancouver, Victoria, so that's one reason I'm tracking this uh, pretty closely within reason. There's like three or four, actually more than that. I have a few different news feeds that I'm listening to um, because it interests me. Uh, not only because of my locality, but also because post-apocalyptic zombie apocalypse, you know, interested in science fiction and stuff, right? I read of some fake news source that it all started with someone eating a bat soup. Probably wrong, but who, who knows? It's saying from the fish market and the snake, and then some people are saying if it, it's it's a bio weapon from that escape from the 
chemical weapon thing we don't know all we can go by because those, that's all speculation and there's a lot of misinformation disinformation there's a lot of uh, hysteria there, there's a lot of garbage like that right the only thing we can confirm and this is the beauty of mathematics this is the absolute beauty of mathematics right even if the numbers are being suppressed exponential growth tells us it doesn't matter if the numbers are being suppressed right now because if it's growing exponentially this is not a good sign right if it's spreading exponentially this is not a good sign right so uh, the mathematics is what we have to keep keep track of so I would say if you're interested in this look at the confirmed cases look at the uh, the percentage the death that's how many people is taking out uh, see how it's spreading around the globe right so how's money launching through institution I'll, I'll cover that sleepy waves once we're done with this okay Chicho, you 1F920, how are you doing? <laughs> like the monkey emote. <laughs> Squad A, nice. I wasn't old enough to remember back then, but how similar is the coronavirus panic to that of the SARS outbreak in 2002? The SARS outbreak had the same ratio of uh, confirmed cases to number of people that were dying. This one is spreading more rapidly from what I understand okay and from what I understand the SARS outbreak um, was contained better and the mutations uh, sort of inaugurate inaugurated people uh, and stuff like this so it was better contained this one's spreading faster this one is more severe than the SARS I believe the SARS killed a lot of people right by the time it was all done um we're, we're talking into the thousands of people died i believe right this one is on track for that if not much more okay lots of idiotic theories about it lots of idiotic theories about it right just keep your eyes on the mathematics the math that's why really i push mathematics so much because you can have all these people with their own ideologies, conspiracy theories, and there are some conspiracies that are fact, 100%, right? There are some assumptions, theories that are fact. There are some that are garbage, right? But you can entertain those thoughts, but don't attach yourself to any of those thoughts. Attach yourself to the numbers that are coming out because that'll dismiss any garbage you come across or confirm any theories you come across, right? It's scary to think about it, but have you considered the idea of population control by the powers that be? Yes, I've, that's one of the things I've looked at as well, right? There's one theory coming out saying that one of the reasons that this is happening is because they want to get rid of cash to make a cashless society because cash is dirty, right? So cash is one of the ways things get spread, right? I just read one blog a report thing that I follow. The Economist said, well, you don't need to get rid of cash. All you need to do is go to polymer uh, synthetic currencies right that don't hold on to the viruses they don't stay as dirty right they're not cotton based they're this based so there's a lot of theories out there why bioweapon this that 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 all i care about personally for me is the rate of growth okay and then because i'm not you know i don't want to know today what it is because in time if something's growing exponentially we're gonna find out sooner rather than later what's going on like there's no there's no doubt right yep the internet right I love math I love math to civil engineers um, what was that question money laundering through institutions sleepy waves let me get to that okay if you put one rice corn in the first square of a chessboard uh, two in the next four then eight You'll have a total of that many when you hit the rest of the 64 squares. When I read this, it blew my mind. By the way, I did not memorize this number. I fetched the book to look it up. Yeah, and the formula for that is this. 2 to the power of x, your function, right? I believe anyway. Odd make or mask of Raymond can 
uh, confirm this. So your function is this, all right? So if you want to find out what you're going to have after 64 squares, and this is the number of squares, it's 2 to the power of 64. If you punch that in, that number is what you should get. I'm going to punch it in just to confirm. Okay, let's check it out. 2 to the power of 64. Boing. 184467440737095516161. Right? That's what that number is. So 2 to the power of 64 will give you that number. So by the way, Olive, you don't have to memorize that number. Next time someone asks you this, you can say you can say the same thing and you don't need any references, right? You could say if you put one rice cone and it's one so there's you know it's a little modified so if you put one the next one's two so this would be actually one plus two to the power of x where actually x minus one so the real formula would be this okay i believe so anyway again mask of raymond or odnick could uh, will confirm maybe two x minus one would it be oh no no it would be one plus what am i why am i adding one so one plus two x minus one so if you're in the first square it's going to be zero one oh no no we don't even need the one it's going to be this two x minus one okay anyway it's uh, same deal something along these lines i just say i would just say this <laughs> start with two two things so if you read your thing would say uh, if you put two rice cones in the first square of a chessboard, two, uh, two the next time, four, then eight, so double it every time. This is the formula you get, and that's the number you're going to get, right? Odd neck, neat. Okay, Chicho, I got to get going. I'll hopefully be able to participate in streams later this week. Awesome, Odd neck. Hope you enjoy your day. The numbers don't look as worse as normal flu, which is about 5 million infected each year and 650,000 deaths okay it's the it's the <laughs> it's the way it's spreading it's the exponential growth part of it which is crazy all right so let's take this down let's talk about money laundering through institutions because that's sort of mathematics as well right money laundering through institutions so what's the best way we do this how should we do this here we'll just do the art one that you mentioned right we'll talk about the art one and again i'm going to generalize right i'm just going to generalize it right focus 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 okay <laughs> and one of the things with the art community where there's a lot of money laundering going through and it's way it's a little bit more intricate uh, through this chris hedges has covered some of this uh matt talaby has covered some of this how the money laundering goes through these institutions but let's say you're joe blue right you got lots of money right you got lots of money coming in you got lots of money and you got lots of money coming in all right if you put one rice cone in the first square of a chessboard two in the next uh four uh then eight you'll have f of x when you hit the last of the 64 squares all of i would add one disclaimer in there you will have approximately f of x equals two to the power of x because there's one difference because what you're doing with that is doing this instead of starting with one two to the power of x it's assuming you started off with two okay so you're saying you started off with one and in the next one you're at two right this formula would be you start off at two and the next one is four so i would say just say you'll have approximately so you put approximately in front of f of x you'll have approximately f of x is equal to two to the power of x when you hit the last of the 64 squares right now 
talking about money laundering through art and whatnot, right? So this guy has lots of money, right? And he has lots of money coming in, right? And when this money comes in, he has to declare that money, he has to file taxes at the end of the year and stuff like this. And if you declare this whole thing, the odds are, if it's a lot of money, 30% of it or whatever percent of it, if it's an individual, half of it maybe be paid to taxes. So instead of two coming in, he would only have one coming in, right? So this person needs to do something with that money to bring himself to a lower tax bracket. If you put one, <laughs> you'll have circa, yeah, when you hit the last square at that. Yeah, if circa means approximate, I think so. I would have to look up that word. <laughs> so this person needs to do something. What is he going to do? He could start, you know, he might have a business, right? He might have a business he's putting money in, right? Writing off those expenses. Equals two. At field 64, it would be two to the power of 64. So it is exactly if you start at one. Okay, cool. My username's Frank. So two to the power of 63. So it would be, the formula would be two to the power of X minus one. Okay. <laughs> Fun. So this person is gonna take some of this money coming in. Let's make this two as well. Just make it symmetrical, right? Two coming in, he's gonna say he's putting a little bit towards the company, right? He gets a little bit right off in tax break if you invest in certain companies around the world there's different things you can do right you could write it off you could put start a fund you could do this you could do that right but he still has let's assume this much left what's he going to do with that right two big dollar signs came in half of one dollar sign went to the business writing things off salaries and stuff like this right he's got this much money left what is he going to do well here's one thing that certain investors certain people that have a lot of money are doing to launder their money through art right here's a painting all right <laughs> i can't draw so here's a painting of what's that guy with hands in his face who drew that thing going oh, like this right so this painting is worth, I don't know how much it is now, $100 million, what is it, $50 million? I have no idea, right? This painting is worth, let's assume, one big dollar sign, right? Equivalent of that. So this person goes, okay, this thing goes on auction, so he buys it, right? He takes this, whoop, and pays into this, right? Now that's not a tax write-off, the scream. Uh, Edvard Munch. Okay, cool. Okay, but if copy and paste my message for the fourth time, it uh, might start to get annoying. <laughs> the scream, the scream. So I'm gonna stop. Okay, all. So he takes this and puts it here. So now he only has to pay tax on this tax, right? If he's no, he's got good accountants. He doesn't even have to pay tax on that. Look at Amazon, look at Netflix, look at all these corporations. They don't pay any tax, really. All right? So they can filter this through somewhere else. But this guy takes this and buys this guy. Woohoo! Now, this isn't a tax write off. But what he can do, there's a museum here. Museum. Museum. Right? Or a university. Versity that says hey we want to display screen this art piece right and our museum or our university or whatever it is so they doop, this guy takes his painting and loans it out to the museum or the university or sells it to them right now it doesn't have to be the scream right it could be another painting less valuable than this now if you look at the tax system the way it's set up if you donate to cultural events and universities educational sites and stuff like this you get tax breaks tax breaks okay 
That's one way they're laundering stuff, right? At the same time, when they loan it out to a un museum or university, because they don't have to realize this, they write off the whole thing. You could look into it. I looked into it a while ago. You can write off the whole value of this thing against your taxes. And then these guys pay a little bit of money back to this guy for renting this thing out for whatever amount of time. So this guy's taking this money, buying this thing, it's still his, and taking this thing, making it work for him, for him. and this whole purchase price is a write-off on his taxes, so he doesn't have to pay taxes on this, and then makes this a revenue generation that comes back to him, right? And then he's paying tax on this guy. Here's a little guy. That's income coming in. So all of a sudden, paying taxes on this, comes into paying taxes on this which isn't which is chump change right which is chump change um, how else are they laundering money here's here's one way here let me let me show you this this is this is brilliant right this is IBM right let's look at IBM stock buyback for the last 10 years and I posted this link in discord right um, here let me bring out the graph we'll do the graph of this hopefully it's still there uh, hopefully I can find it right here is IBM Doop. it should be in economics that I posted it in economics economics where are you economics economics there we go IBM IBM US Fed da, da, da. did I post it in there Oh, there it is. Here's the graph. It's a, it's a, it's a tweet, right? Uh, someone posted a tweet. I haven't looked much deeper than this, but I follow the stock market, and this is what they do, right? So here's the link to this tweet. Doink. And it's got the graph in there, right? So I'm going to take this down. I hope Sleepy Waves, this sort of gives you an idea how this works, right? It's a lot of bureaucracy and it's a lot of gameplay transferring to other institutions. So there's a whole system in the background that allows people who are generating a lot of income to be able to move things around to lower their tax bracket, right? But here's another way money gets laundered, right? Let's look into here. Let me bring up the IBM stock, the it's um what do you call it it's metric as well right ibm it's p ratio ibm and it's yield dividend yield um oh nice percentage p ratio is 13. oh look at this look at this <laughs> hilarious funny funny so here's the here's the thank you my pleasure sleepy waves here's the tweet that this guy made right over the past 20 years ibm has bought 140 billion dollars of a stock its current market cap is 127 billion dollars right let me confirm that yeah market cap is 124 billion dollars according to google uh, finance which isn't the best but because they stopped providing more info on that here's the google finance it's the quickest one i can go right so they have bought back 140 billion dollars buyback buyback in the last 20 years okay 120 market cap is 125 billion according to google finance 124.5 but let's call it 125 billion billion market cap cap and market cap means what the value is based on what the share price is for IBM right it's got how many outstanding shares uh, oh, this thing doesn't show the outstanding shares uh, unfortunately the metrics aren't the best uh, revenue yeah it doesn't show it unfortunately uh, but it's got some quarterly financials which are pretty good they're all on the up and up if you scroll down but whatever it is we don't care too much about that stuff right 
So what the you can think about it as it's not book value, but it's based on the stock market. This is how much IBM is worth. But in the last 20 years, they bought a hundred and forty dollar, hundred and forty billion dollars of their own share back, right? So they've spent a hundred and forty billion dollars. IBM has spent a hundred and forty billion dollars buying back its own share, right? But right now the company is only worth one hundred twenty-five billion dollars. What the? So if they didn't spend that, and if the stock price was the same right now, they could have spent one hundred twenty-five billion dollars, bought back all their stock, right? It's crazy, right? Now what have been? What have they been doing? What's the what's the stock price of the last twenty years that they've been buying back stock? So let me do. Uh, unfortunately, this is a graph of. Is this a 20 year graph? Yeah, that's a 20 year graph. Here's what the stock price, here's what the graph looks like for IBM, right? Let me make sure I grab the right one. What's the first one? International Business uh, Machine Corp market cap. Okay, that's the market cap. International Business Machine Corp stock buyback. That's the amount of uh, Machine Corp shares. Okay, that's shares outstanding. I want, I just want the chart. Here's the chart. Uh, 20 years we're gonna go back to 2000 to 2000 where are we 2000 here's what it looks like approximately okay again we're going from 2000 2000 to 2020 oops 2020 all right and by the way uh, 4.6 percent yield so right now is 4.6 percent yield that means if you own a hundred hundred dollars of IBM stock every year IBM will give you back four dollars and sixty one cents most likely uh, broken down into quarterly payments right but let's assume it's a yearly payment so every year you'll get back four dollars and sixty one uh, four dollars and sixty one cents for every hundred dollars you have invested in IBM so IBM is rewarding people that are investing in its company right or investing in its stock okay so take a look at this this is what the graph of ibm looks like over the last 20 years let me put my marker here so the price here was 100 so we're going to go from zero to 200 plus 200 so this is zero here's a hundred here's 200 right here, let me make this a little bit more clear. Right. Here's zero, here's a hundred, here's two hundred dollars. Okay, so that's a hundred. So, and then we're gonna break this. So, I'm gonna go 2010, 2005, oops, 2005, and 2015, right so in 2000 it was a uh, one 110 dollars or so so we're sitting around here and the stock did this basically and let me find some markers for myself so i go to them so 2005 was 93 dollars here uh 2010 it was it took a dip it was 80 something dollars oh it kicked up 2010 come on oh it's 130 dollars in 2010 so it kicked up 2,130 dollars 2012 it was 189 dollars peaking at 210 dollars 2013 and then right now it's sitting at 140 dollars 140 dollars was sort of in the middle right so the ibm stock has done this uh, and then did a dip and then and then it goes up and then it goes basically down like this right it should actually i should draw that a little nicer because it's not that it did this so it may look like it's stabilizing right so during this time, IBM has bought back $140 billion of its own stock, okay? 
And right now it's value based on its share price being $140. Share price is $140. $140. It's valued at $125 billion. Okay. And I don't know what the book value of uh, IBM stock is. Okay. During this time that IBM has bought back whenever a company buys back its own stock there's more demand for the stock if and I dug down a little bit further into this they did most of their buyback or a huge chunk of their buyback when the stock price was up here so they were they were buying back their own stock when the stock price was really high because they were supporting the stock to be high right why were they supporting the stock to be high because a lot of the uh, executives at IBM right a lot of the management they get stock bonuses options to bought to be able to sell a certain number of stocks so let's assume Joe Blow is working gets hired at IBM he's a smart guy right he's the idea guy how do you draw a light bulb here's an idea guy do, 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 do. right here's an idea guy right he gets hired to work at, at IBM let's say top management some of the top management let's say he's making a million dollars a year million dollars a year right they say okay we're gonna give you a million dollars a year smart move though smart move for the management and the people who own the stock right bad for the company because when they're buying their own stock at this price that means they're taking money away from research and development because research and development is the real driving machine of a company right if a company is doing a lot of stock buyback that means they're not putting the money into research and development to come up with new products so they're gonna lose market share down the road right so if this guy's making one million dollars salary they say they hire this guy oh we'll give you one million dollars salary plus we'll give you options 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 to buy the stock at or sell the stock at a hundred and eighty dollars right now let's say okay let's say hundred and eighty dollars right or to buy no no they said they say to buy her so options to buy the stock let's call it lower at hundred and forty dollars right so if the stock price is above hundred and forty dollars he doesn't have to buy the stock he just sells these options to be able to buy the stock at hundred and forty dollars right so let's assume the stock is sitting at two hundred dollars here when this guy gets hired let's say the stock was sitting at hundred and fifty dollars let's assume it was sitting here right he's still getting ten dollars extra right because he's a good guy they want him so he's getting ten dollars deal on the stock by the time it gets up here and this usually has a lock-in period a year lock-in period six months two years whatever it is usually just a year right let's assume in whatever that is five years the stock has gone up to two hundred dollars right now this guy has the right to buy the stock at 140 but it's sitting at 200 so he doesn't have to buy it all he does is just sell his options to buy the stock at 140 at 200 so he makes 60 dollars per stock whatever the option was right at the same time he's been getting paid five percent for holding the stocks right well, I, well some of them they allow to get paid some people don't but if you're holding the stock you're making 4.6 percent based on the price of 140 dollars yield every year it's it's such a ridiculous game that you can launder do, you, do we call this laundering money this is just part of the system this is what they do right some companies go out there buy other companies right they're I forget what they're called I used to know the word they buy other companies and liquidate the companies so they go after the pensions of companies right so they go into a company cut back on the R&D kick up the yield the dividend so they start paying out dividend big time to the shareholders right yellow pages is one of these people one of these companies yellow pages back in the day okay if you look back at it 
it was paying a yield of 12 percent at one point right so all the money that was coming into yellow pages the money that they were making they were just paying it out as a dividend of 12 percent to stockholders right? and just liquidating the company right and then they sell the properties the land that the company has they sell uh intellectual property that the company has and then if the company's been around for a long time there's pensions there right that its employees rely on for retirement and the company says oh we're don't we're not liquid we have debts we have to go after the pensions and the pensions have to pay the debt right because those people who own the debt um, who who the company is indebted to gets first get first dibs on the assets of the company and who usually um, who lends to a company that is not liquid it's usually the management's sister company or banks right that they're invested in they lend the money and they know their what assets are in there so they pull their money out and people whose pensions were in the company get screwed look at enron right it, it's a just a gigantic ponzi scheme gigantic ponzi scheme for regular investors like me and you i don't invest in this crap like i don't know on wall street but i think it's 80 plus percent of the stocks on wall street are, are owned by institutional investors right it's not joe blow right it's institutional investors right big hedge funds companies bang whatever it might be right they own majority of stocks right so 20 percent 15 to 20 percent is in the hands of uh weak i forget what the terminology is i uh they shake the tree <laughs> anyway there's all this terminology they use right so that's the game at play ibm is a classic example classic example you look like you did a lot in the 80s <laughs> no people see that stock investors look at it uh civil engineering no people see that stock investors look at it uh if you were buying ibm here you were foolish especially if you knew that ibm was spending so much money buying back their own stock because you knew that it was just ibm pushing their own stock value up right hi mr sussman hello matt how are you doing got to go chicho her her bowl double <laughs> i can't pronounce it hope you're having a good time hope you have a good day today okay can't wait till you put this on youtube bit shoot i'll catch this tomorrow at work okay um uh, tomorrow is still most likely be on twitch the odds are this will be up on bit shoot or youtube uh, probably two days three days from now i'll see uh, i maybe longer because uh, i'm not going to get a chance to edit this thing in the next few days so if i download it and the the audio is synced up okay with the video on my editor then i might edit out chunks and just load those on and then load up the whole uh stream uh, so in the next week anyway in the next week where is the shilingens i don't know what that means shilingens. <laughs> hi chicho hope you're well james david sutton how are you doing doing well brother buy when low sell when high yep buy low sell high unfortunately a lot of people buy high sell low chicho can you do a relationship stream soon uh sure sleepy waves send me a reminder and uh, we'll do one in the next uh <laughs> in the next uh set i'll set one up okay i'm gonna pop this with the chocolate look at this thing look at the raspberries in the back of that check that out those are little raspberry chunks great food is amazing i hope you guys are eating fruit eat lots of fruit it's good for you fruit is delicious right mm. 
what else i got other examples of this uh -huh. what's another good one like if you want to watch a really good documentary on the stock market favorite fruit chicho if you could only pick one oh lonely pig is so difficult like i love pomegranates but i wouldn't want to eat pomegranates the only be the only fruit that i eat the fruit that i eat the most there is it's like most people uh, i eat a lot of apples because we have a lot of apples uh, that grow locally so i try to eat local fruit and apples is the one that grows a lot here in season i eat a lot of plums um i eat uh, a lot of cherries in season a lot of blackberries in season um, i eat oranges i eat <coughs> i love banana yeah, who doesn't love bananas well there are people that don't don't love bananas uh chicho what is a late stage capitalism late stage capitalism late stage capitalism is uh, i would have to look this up but just going by memory it's basically mergers and acquisitions where a lot of companies that are seeking growth the only way they can get their growth is by consuming other companies right it's like ibm right there they spend 140 billion dollars buying back their own stock i don't know how much money they put in research and development right like big blue was a disaster bomb right because it was it was they were trying to implement older models to newer technology is garbage there's like the two of the uh fastest computers in the world supercomputers in the world are in china they're not in the united states right so within a short period of time within a decade right china has risen to the super the fastest supercomputers in the world are in china united states does not no longer have the fastest supercomputer in the world right ibm used to have the fastest supercomputer in the world but they stopped putting a lot of money into research and development they spent the money buying back their own shares so they can kick the stock price up so these ceos can cash out more money and they were paying out not a bad dividend for a technology company like what why is ibm it's a tech company really paying out 4.61 percent dividend yield right if you look at apple it's one something if you look at microsoft it's one something or less than one right so these guys are paying out 4.6 percent yield per year so they're buying back their own stock they're paying out dividends yields so they're not really in the tech game anymore into r d research and development r d right so they haven't been really coming up with anything novel right one of the biggest scams they have they have the ibm t182 calculator or something which is the one of the biggest scams that is being perpetrated on our education system in canada and i'm pretty sure in the united states it's the calculator that does graphing and stuff like this right now this calculator in 2000 i had students that were paying 100 plus dollars to buy this calculator right so let's just say 100 dollars to buy this calculator in 2020 i have students that are buying this calculator that are buying it for 180 dollars right why in the effing world is a calculator that basically the same technology it's got the same screen there isn't anything novel in it really right over a 20 year period the price of this calculator has gone up and schools in my area are telling their students that you have to buy this calculator right my take is right my assumption is i don't have facts to back this up but i just look at the mathematics and i look at what they're promoting in the mathematics they're teaching in our curriculum system i know it's a scam right what i'm pretty sure schools are getting kickbacks for promoting this stupid machine calculator it's not a bad calculator but it's the only calculator in the world that i know of in human history that has gone up in value in 20 years it costs more to buy it now than it did in the past 
if you bought calculators in the 1980s when they started coming out they were like twenty dollars or whatever it was fifty dollars thirty dollars good calculators right twenty five dollars and stuff like this within five years they were giving away giving out calculators at a gas station you got a if you did a fill up you would get a free calculator <laughs> it's it's crazy right real price might be the same inflation yeah mm -hmm. we can do the math here over a 20 year period let's assume inflation let me erase those but it, this is the only technology that i know of that hasn't come down in price right but we learned learned this yes my username frank that's what i was gonna say yeah watch this let's do inflation right. the formula for inflation is p is equal to a1 plus r over n and t right and n is the compounding period t is time r is the rate of inflation a is what you start off with p is what you end up getting right so we want to figure out what the rate of inflation is. Let's say the compounding period is just once a year, right? So n is equal to one. So we're going to say n is equal to one. The price of the calculator in 2000 was $100. So A, what we started off with is $100. The time was 20 years. T is equal to 20 years. And P is the price we're at for the calculator in 2020 which is p is equal to 180 dollars right now don't quote me on these numbers i'm doing approximate right so this is 180 is equal to 101 plus the r is what we're trying to figure out you put an r here you put a question mark right we're trying to figure out r r to the power of 20 because n is one right so divide by 100 this kills that and there's 100 here, zero kills zero. This becomes um, 1.8. 1 1.8 1 is equal to, is equal to one plus R to the power of 20. And then you take the 20th root of this, 20th root of this, right? So what's the 20th root of, <coughs> of, um, Am I doing this right? I hope I'm doing this right. My mind is still moist. 20 of the root. So 1.8 second. Nice. Root 20. 1. 1.029825 is equal to 1 plus R. Right? And then bring the 1 over. So rate is equal to 0 0.029825, which translates into 2.98%. And it's 1% above the rate of inflation that most centralized institutions try to go for, right? So it's they're charging more than inflation but let's say inflation is three percent inflation is way more than three percent but let's assume it's three percent so even an ibm calculator is being sold for what the average inflation target rate is for the federal government is trying to uh, charge right crazy this is technology which would be worth less not more especially considering that it's not that much more powerful than the same calculator has been used 20 years ago okay hey chicho haven't stopped by here in a while price cm9 how are you doing how's life treating you not bad brother or sister of course <laughs> i got a little bit of a cough started off 2020 with getting a flu virus some pounding pounding a lot of vitamin c grapefruit right grapefruit and this is the power of mathematics, right? You have questions, it helps you answer it. Super delicious. You have an HP 
48 emulator on my iPhone. No point in having a real calculator. Yeah, right. But in the school system, they're not allowed to use their phones as a calculator during exams. <laughs> Great fruit. <laughs> what is that? Kacha Gazma emote. Some of these emotes are awesome. I love them. Right. So how does it connect? Oh yeah, late stage capitalism. So well, check this out. So let's talk about late stage capitalism to a certain degree. Let me. I'm going to look up the definition as well. Make sure we're talking about the right thing. Because as you, as you can tell, I go off on a lot of tangents, right? So late stage capitalism. Let's pop this up. Late stage capitalism late stage capitalism late stage capitalism let's look at the indicators of late stage capitalism there's a few points that you look at right so we're just going to go with wiki for ease of access but it's not the best place to be but it's still okay okay late stage capitalism or late stage capitalism is a term first used <laughs> used by german economist Werner Sombart around the turn of the 20th century since 2016 the term has been used in the United States and Canada to refer to perceived absurdities crises and injustices and inequality created by modern business development okay I just want to find out what the history man uh, Mandel in popular culture I don't care about popular culture I just want to know what the points are of late stage capitalism late stage capital refers to the historical epoch since 1940 including a post-world war ii economic expansion uh, called the going of capitalism this version already exists for a long oh god come on give me that stuff what well, mandel suggested that important qualitative changes occurred within the capital original man oh this is all history crap uh, mandel the competitive capital production okay so we're uh this is there's monopoly uh there's monopoly rights given to things i think uh let me see if i can find it definition let me find the definition uh character of late stage capitalism list them list them example from selling jeans with fake mud on them for a london bar oh come on give me a list mm. Sorry if I'm taking my time to do this because if we're going to talk about it, I'd rather have the list of stuff. Why do people here? Uh, list. Let's do a proper search. A brief late stage capitalist reading. I don't want to read a list. Uh, oh, I should do indicators. Let's do indicators. Indicators. Boink. God, there's so much noise in the stuff now, isn't it? <sighs> Crazy. Late stage capitalism. What is late stage capitalism? Oh, I can't believe we're going to Cora. Why the phrase is suddenly everywhere? Why is it suddenly everywhere? Uh, oh, we don't want to be here. Jesus. Marx classified it. So let me. Marx indicators. Marx. I guess Marx is a person that. Uh, da, 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 da. I just want the point format. Oh my god, there's so much car marks was right. Everybody's right at some stuff. No one's created a just a list of all oh, Chris Hedges has written it. <laughs> oh, nice. Here's an article from Chris Car Marx was right. Chris Hedges is writing it. Funny. Final stages of uh, capitalism. Austrian economics. What does late stage capitalism mean? Come on, give it to us. Oh God, you want me to log in? Get lost. Okay, we're not gonna watch that. Okay, sleepy waves, do this for me. 
find the indicators of late stage capitalism I, I believe monopoly um, what is this coming up wow this is just a different language now Jesus neo-capitalism Mandel free competitive capital production roughly from the phrase of monopoly capitalism okay so monopoly capitalism that's what it is uh, and is characteristic by the imperialistic competition for international market and the exploitation of colonial territory yeah the epoch of late capitalism emerging out of World War two which is it's so we're getting into protectionism we're getting into <laughs> the centralized institution giving monopoly powers to certain companies right um, monopoly monopoly rights basically for example Google almost has a monopoly on search engines right um, ISPs in like it's crazy back in 2000 in Canada right here's 2020 right we get a higher speed internet right now barely in 20 years insanity and it cost more back in 2000 I had at one point four computers uploading and downloading 24 hours a day right without any data maximums without any restrictions uh, and it was fairly high speed for the time right the speed has improved for sure but not 20 years worth of technology right so basically what happened was in Canada you had Shaw communications you had Rogers Rod Rogers and you had Talus right these are the big three so these big three were given money by the central institution central government to roll out high-speed internet and connect up all of Canada right these people did exactly what IBM did right they kicked up their dividends right stocks I don't know what the share of Shaw communications I looked at recently I think basically it's done this right like that's what it does right and what the stock price does is just fluctuates there they have monopoly rights over certain regions right and basically monopoly rights and they give out a dividend of I don't know what's Shaw's dividend here let's look up Shaw dividend what this company is doing sorry if I'm going a little bit uh, uh, focused on the stock market on this but Shaw Shaw communications boop let's check it out no this this is not what I want Shaw Our communication class B, yeah, 4.5 percent. Uh, P is 20. Jeez Louise, <laughs> right. so 4.5 percent yield. So Shaw Communications is going giving 4.5 percent yield, right? So if you own Shaw stock and the rate of inflation is 3 percent or 2 percent, whatever the number is, you can put your money here and get four and a half percent and you're beating the rate of inflation by 2.5 percent why is this company allowed to function like this because their internet has not improved in 20 years that much compared to how technology should be improving the price hasn't come down right the, the cell phone rates that we pay in Canada are through the roof it's insane right back here Canada was one on the forefront of rolling out technology internet internet access we used to have major wireless companies stationed in Vancouver right what happened was Motorola Motorola MOT I wonder what Motorola stock is stock is doing right MOT let's check out MOT I think it's MOT 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 oops MOT Motorola Motorola M MSI that's the symbol MSI oh look at Motorola its stock price is through the roof wow look at that whoa look at that chart whoa look at that chart MSI Motorola it's starting to go towards what it was during the 2000 bubble right it's gone pretty high so if you look at the 
Motorola stock, this is giving 1.42% yield, right? And the stock looks like this right now from 2010. It's basically going like this, right? Exponential growth, right? And since 2000, basically it looks like this and it's going back up again. So this is 2000, this is 2000 here, okay? I'm making a mess of the board, but whatever. <laughs> so if you look at this, right? During the 2000s, late 1990s, right? In Vancouver, there were a number of companies that were technology companies, right? Tech company A, tech company B, tech company C. And this is what happens when disruptive innovation comes in. There's a lot of companies like a gold rush coming into the field that, that are new, that have novel technology or pretend to have novel technology. And they enter the market, D, E, F, G, H, I, and there was there was a lot, right? Vancouver was one of the world uh, hubs, centers for new uh, technology related to wireless communication and data management and stuff like this. When the stock market crash happened in 2000, from the late 19 or mid 1990s, late 1990s into the mid 2000s, early 2000s. Bought out, 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 right? More than 80% of the companies, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but a huge chunk of the companies either went under or they got bought out. In Canada, Nortel Networks, which at the time in 2000 was considered to be one of the most important, if not the most important technology company in the world. They had patents up the yin-yang right its stock price was going through the roof it it had major major sell sales into multiple different companies right everybody was buying from them because they had uh, uh, they had uh, uh, the software as well as the hardware right for networks and stuff like this so all of these companies were buying from nortel network because they were the only game really in town right they had patents up the yin yang okay everybody in canada that had a fund in an rsp and stuff like this had stock in nortel network okay interest rates in the 2000s from the late 1990s to early 2000s went from two percent to six over six percent let's call it 6.5 percent right all of a sudden all of these companies it was new uh sort of a gold rush everybody was maxed out and uh borrowing a lot of money because they needed to roll out this new technology into the world right and all of these companies had borrowed money to roll out their new technologies right and Nortel Networks was selling product to these companies on the assumption that they're gonna pay right so they ship the product to these people and these people pay on Nortel Networks in three months or something like this when the interest rate went from two percent to six and a half percent or so these companies could not no longer make their interest payments so they stopped paying Nortel Networks Nortel Networks went under people lost a ton of money right and what happened, Nortel Networks was in bankruptcy protection for a number of years, and I can't remember when it happened, but all the patents of Nortel Networks went on auction, and I believe Google bought them, right? Google bought the patents that Nortel Network had, which were through the roof, right? That were some of the most innovative patents that we've had in the technological uh in the technology sector from the 2000s right and they bought them in mid 2000s or late 2000s i can't i can't remember now right so all of a sudden the biggest company in canada got bought out right with their patents they went under this is to a certain degree late stage capitalism where all of a sudden two or three or four major companies own everything okay so right now google dominates the search market right right now uh, whatever social network you're on uh, what is it 
Facebook controls a huge social one than that I can't phantom like it blows my mind it's uh, it's still it's still sitting there I think it's losing a fair bit of uh, clients I don't know any students that use Facebook like the new generation is not using it right so there's gonna be a little bit of turmoil there so right now in terms of patents and uh, technology and stuff like this in terms of media so for example back 30 years ago 40 years ago we had tons of different um, what do you call it uh, news outlets out there right that were provide you know, creating news newspapers maybe on TV maybe uh, local newspapers and stuff like this right now most of the media is controlled or news is controlled by I believe by five different companies right they control 80% of the news consumed in Canada United States right five companies control 80% of the news or 90% of the main street corporate news this is late stage capitalism late stage capitalism in large part basically means this one company owns everything right there is no competition right there's only monopoly rights given to certain companies basically it's like a uh, same thing as uh, when we had when kings gave the rights for trade of a certain product to a certain lord and no one else was allowed to deal in this product because the king had given the rights for this product to be controlled by this family right that's late stage capitalism to me i couldn't find a list of all the indicators of late stage capitalism we could take a look at it as, well as, as soon as we can get a sort of a list of all the indicators of what late stage capitalism is you know what it says if it's a dog it's got four legs and a tail and a barks is a dog right what are the indicators for late stage capitalism and it seems it seems like uh, what the thing is saying is uh, just a quick search we did it's becoming the catchphrase now late stage capitalism I don't like catchphrases right catchphrases are used to manipulate people right Rambo how you doing hey buddy what's up what are you uh, painting it looks like a bunch of aliens <laughs> maybe it was a millipede going across right I think it uh, converges to the power law distribution power law distribution power law distribution why do i know that power law distribution Oop. i want to look this up power law distribution power law distribution oh yeah so that's what we were talking about with exponential growth right i thought it's a specific term related in uh, capitalism economics an example of power law graph being used to demonstrate ranking of popularity yeah so it's basically think about it as uh, this when we're doing it right you're my favorite Canadian nice thanks here's power law right Whoop. that's the graph of a power law right and this can vary you can go like this or go like this or sharper like this fun fun we're sort of covering math but we're taking a look at how math is related uh, in the world right now which is a cool thing to do actually it's a cool thing to do have you watched anything cool lately rambo i did a marathon yesterday i was low energy so i actually sat down finally found a dub version of attack on titan and watched season three of attack on titan in one day Kobe Bryant says, yeah, <laughs> it came up earlier in the stream and his daughter and another kid and family, right? Microsoft was accused of buying out companies and creating a monopoly, but they aren't that powerful anymore, right? No, Microsoft's pretty powerful. Their stock has gone up from $25 10 years ago to $160 right now, and they have a lot of monopoly powers given them right I wouldn't be buying the stock I think it's a bubble big time but Microsoft is very powerful still because they rule 
they 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 have their hands in government and um, the it's basically called regu regulatory capture right so the people on top alternate and if that's the case there is no serious problem and I'm probably way off uh, but uh, uh, don't bully me please no Olive, we're not bullying uh, but the ideal thing is you do want to see a flow of power changing hands but it's not it's not changing hands not by a long shot right so uh, it's actually consolidating into fewer hands that's what late stage capitalism is I guess or that's the end game of capitalism right one entity controls everything okay oh man I haven't seen s3 yet I should uh, get on it it was good green tech it was good I did it seriously I watched 12 episodes in one day <laughs> I just sat down it's just like oh nice nice I watched the movie the pool did you know that movie no I haven't seen the pool oh by the way Rambo you mentioned you watched uh, uh, 1917 on the last stream and I wasn't really into watching a more war movie or something like this but uh, all of a sudden the opportunity came up <laughs> the, <hold on. laughs> the opportunity came up to watch 1917 So I watched it not a bad movie there's a fair bit of propaganda in it like big time uh, but that's what you can expect from World War two movies right yeah poor guy number one deserves to go that soon no one deserves to go that soon yeah by the way do you know the meta math proof Explorer no I'm a programmer I like the idea that proofs can be verified automatically then there can't be a uh, be bugs in it wow no no I don't know that one uh, <coughs> Frank I don't know that one 1970 was good it was a good show they took uh, the whole thing of being shot uh, just continuous shot throughout the whole movie uh, they took that from uh, Stanley Kubrick's really idea when he did uh, uh what's that world war one movie that he made amazing movie amazing movie um, but technology does change continually continuously and that opens up for new competitors olive for sure but check this out 20 years ago the united states was number one in terms of technology other than Canada Canada was number one as well but uh, research and motion motion and Nortel got taken out right there's reasons why it got taken out okay uh, and game at play that got taken out, but we won't get into it but let's let's say the United States was the Mecca of techno technological development right but because they became lazy they did stock buybacks they were laundering money they didn't do research and development properly they they basically sat on their asses right and became kings oh what happened in the last 10 years China rising 5g technology China I believe is two generations ahead of any company in the United States rolling out anything related to 5g now I'm not a you know this is not promoting 5g or trashing 5g like you can think about talk about the effects the health effects and all this effects of 5g and the tracking effects and the data management effects and all this jazz right i'm just talking about the rollout of technology the united states lost the game in 5g china is ahead of them why did that happen because china was hungry was thirsty right they came up and they did major research and development and they surpassed the king up top the American Silicon Valley up top all of a sudden governments around the world are talking to China to buy their 5g technology and companies to buy buy their 5g technology not the United States right that's why the United States was putting some major uh, tariffs and uh, trade restrictions on China because they were they're rising right 
The goal is to write out each step of a proof until the basic axiom. Yeah, it's. It, it, I can see it working for sure, right? Uh, the question is the assumptions. Is everything connected up? And all of that would have to have references back, right? We should move to China. No, <laughs> I have no desire to move to China. I don't. I don't. I have no desire to live in totalitarian states, right? No, China may, may be the economic future of the world, but it's not the future of the world when it comes to free speech, human rights. It's not. The United States is showing that it's not either. The question is where is going to be the place to have human rights. China just having the funds and manpower to throw at anything, really. The still a second world country. They definitely throw a ton of resources into tech development. Yeah, green tech. The Western world dropped the ball on technological development, right? Why? Because of money laundering and monopoly practices. And some people, I guess, are calling this late stage capitalism, right? Ghana is better. Yeah, that government is super shady. They're like North Korea. If they had uh, money and were open to the world, that may be a bit harsh. So China uh, provide the new and better and competes and wins. This is good. I don't see how this is. I didn't say it's bad, Olive. No, 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 I didn't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's bad, it's very good. I wanna see multiple, multiple places that rise up. I wanna see competition. I don't like that in the West, we're stuck with monopoly powers given to these corporations that rule over us. It's insane where is the market competitiveness because when the market is competitive when there's free flow of information and technology and trade really then you see competition and better opportunity and better technology delivered to the market right hey chicho hey zari how are you doing i know you don't like to discuss trump but did you happen to watch his recent entire recording of his meeting no I don't I don't watch what Trump says man I don't it's like uh, for me it's economics right economics and certain ideologies uh, it was a fundraiser with oil and natural gas representatives it was fascinating to hear the dialogue from the inside no no I haven't seen it if there's anything uh, revolutionary that they said uh let us know or post it on discord but as far as i know there isn't anything novel that is coming out of natural gas oil sector we know what the game has been played for a very long time they are just using the zer Milo frankel set theory already twenty thousand proofs on the database cool so that's what i was actually gonna do oh, okay yeah olive don't get me wrong i'm not against competition i'm pro competition i want comp i want more competition but i i want competition to be in my vicinity as well right there's so many regulations put in place right now that industry can't come up and challenge the kings sitting on their thrones right so basically the math proof one if you want to if you have a proof here, let's say you lay out your proof, right? You enter this thing into a major database that has 23,000 proofs in it, right? 23,000 proofs in it. So every point here goes out and seeks out the assumption or the link right if this is equal to this then this if this is equal to this then this if this is equal to this then this then this and goes through this proof to try to confirm that this axiom here is valid Boop. right awesome automation excellent use of automation right oh yeah i have forgotten your streaming today so i'm glad i made blueberry how are you doing intelligent blueberry i think canada should declare war on china were you in the name? No. <laughs> war sucks, man. Anybody that wants war has never been to war, has no idea what war is, and is a simpleton, right? right? Or they're making money off war. 
Then they're a piece of shit. Right? Proofs don't prove axioms. You mean theorem? Oh, it's theorem. Okay, sorry. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> right? <laughs> proofs don't prove axioms. You mean theorems? Yeah. The theorem, the there's usually a statement here saying what they're going to do. I believe anyway. And then they start off with this assumption or, or with this axiom or with this known fact proof that's already been proven and they go through to, 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 to link things up boop, 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 boop. Right. what is my profession i teach math beans how are you doing thank you very much for the bits brother glass of tea and a late comment if we pay china to make our goods we kind of give them free technology is also a bad thing yeah and that's exactly what western companies did right to reduce their expenses right to make more profit because they're on wall street because their first priority is wall street right and to pay out dividends and stuff like this and stock price going up they sign contract with companies in china to farm out their production and they reversed engineered or they didn't even have to reverse engineer they're engineering the whole thing so they took the te technology right legendary rob boss how are you doing kobe bryant has died rest in peace yeah helicopter accident yeah it came up earlier uh rob boss uh, his daughter her friend the family love your stuff it's always so <laughs> Zoot. Too funny, too funny. Chicho, I don't know. Uh, no, you watch anime. I knew you read mangas, but it's so cool that you also. Oh, for sure, Intelligent Blueberry. We did a, we just did a video where we talked about. Uh, here, let me link up the video for you. Nice. We just, uh, I took out a little section. Well, not a little section. I pasted together a few sections from a live stream we did. It was supposed to be politics live stream. Um, where oh come on where is this here it is here here's a little video i put out uh where where to start where to start if you're just getting into anime and i recommended some stuff and people on the live stream started recommending what people should be watching and one of them i just recently watched uh blue something here check this out and inside at the in the description of that video if you go to my about page on my blog there's a section where i've listed a whole bunch of anime that i recommend watching and that list is bigger than one we went through in the video are you a math teacher how do you earn money i i do private teaching it's like selling a product i sell my time right i teach mathematics it's like how do people make money they put time into something and they get paid right that that's business <laughs> right and I, I i don't have a teaching certificate i have a geophysics degree right and i did geophysics for a long time if i can throw my two cents for sure i recommend the time I got reincarnated as a slime. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Base, I haven't seen that one. I thought uh, you were going to mention as soon as I saw time. Uh, the girl who travels through time is really good. There's so many amazing anime there. So many amazing anime. Eat grapefruit. Eat grapefruit. Do you have children, Rambo? I don't think you have children. You're not old enough to have children. And dark chocolate with raspberries. When did I start watching anime? The interface? Olive. Grapefruit? Mm hmm Check this out. Right now, this grapefruit will be bitter. 
right because it has some of the skin some of the stuff on it you like olive likes olives olives are awesome but if you want a grapefruit not to taste bitter just eat the the meat of it right forget about this this stuff the skinny stuff on it right that's the bitter part eat the inside of it so peel these guys and it won't be that bitter The interface i started watching anime in the late 1970s when i was a kid i would wake up at 5 30 in the morning so i could watch star blazers that was airing at six o'clock in the morning so i started watching anime with star blazers in 1979 1978 1979 1979 1980 star blazers was my introduction to anime and i fell in love instantly instantly as a kid, I would wake up at 5.30, make myself breakfast, and watch it at 6 o'clock in the morning. Beans, I disagree with some of what you say, but most of the time, your, your perspective on it is very knowledgeable, and you make me read stuff again. But most times, we are on the same page. Awesome. What are we disagreeing on, Beans? I like this agreement, by the way. I like, I like talking with people who have a different perspective on the same thing that I do, that... I respect that I you know what information am I missing or what information should we share right what is the one thing that we disagree on beans I'm 34 years old and still a virgin what should I do uh, many things you can do Rambo many things you can do uh, start joining a club and going out socializing physics is interesting when I was in uh, school a long time ago I had a physics teacher but it was much easier to understand how integrals work with Newton's theory than learning it in math class yeah probably yeah applied is easier to learn than theoretical I think just keep being you that was the best thing right hmm might buy me a grapefruit and try that trick yeah just get rid of the 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 skins on them just eat the meat it's really good it's really good damn son it's the same with me but naruto nice <laughs> naruto i've watched some episodes i haven't gone off on it yet right i haven't gone off on it yet star blazers was apps for science fiction person it was brilliant brilliant rambo pretty vague question are you asking for relationship advice life advice yeah. i think rambo is just playing really the girls look at me because they don't want to believe uh <laughs> well first first order of business if you're serious rambo don't put yourself down all right why would you put yourself down you seem like a nice guy all right sometimes very funny And you seem to like movies nice movies that's good <clears throat> i am so ugly that many uh, out of pure pity want to open a donation account so i can afford <laughs> i take the money and run brother i guess one is i like to believe our democracy is not just like a puppet but i really uh seem like they are yeah i i i beans i wish i wish we actually had a true democracy like obama to get immigrants apply for citizenship and then trump deport them obama deported a lot of immigrants a lot of immigrants naruto was crazy uh thematically as a kid was it <laughs> i can't even imagine it would have been like just ah the the naruto yelling stuff is insane right ah just over the top well damn that beats my reason i wanted a turkey sandwich <laughs> there was even a kid in russia who committed suicide when uh, oh are you serious damn shite i would hate to think that is the american way or what the 
people in power want yeah i the the dream is real the constitution is legit it's one of the best uh structured uh governments in the world really the way the society should function unfortunately is corrupt to the core if that's why they look at you uh, those girls aren't worth your attention anyway olive awesome awesome have you ever been to america yeah a lot naruto just uh, gave me a crazy sense of adventure when i started watching it many years ago i enjoyed it less so filler seasons okay i know he deported a lot but now we have ice and the new hyped that up uh and the new news hyped that up so much and was silent when obama was in office about deportation yeah and that was the kicker right the news was so silent on anything one of the major uh, reasons that democracy in the united states is so basically non-existent is because of corporate news right because there is no free press in the united states other than what you see online right so it's basically corporate news being propagated down to 85 percent of the population and those are the masses that they can control uh everything with right i blame journalism the news agencies and it's basically what we talked about late stage capitalism i guess where monopoly powers and mergers and acquisitions happen and basically everything is consolidated into one centralized institution right i just saw a post on facebook that stated when venezuela was uh richest 60 years ago and the image st stated the bottom of saying that in the last 10 years the country was ruined solely by socialism to be honest i could not have face palming yeah intelligent blueberry these posts and images and crap on facebook and some of these social media is just propaganda it's a lot of them being created from troll farms or uh, uh, tracy dawson uh, agents uh call them uh, correctly agents that are propagandists creating this stuff to get people to be reactionaries it's just garbage right chicho do you like armenian coffee yeah and would you ever consider doing a stream video on that uh, we could we could I don't make it here really but I, I make it at my grandma's house when I go there play back and we make a, a little bit of uh, some people call it Armenian coffee some people call it Greek coffee some people call it Turkish coffee and stuff like this the little dark coffee that you drink uh, I do drink it uh, every second week at least when I go play back out over my grandma I feel like we still have millions of slaves just slave lifestyle or wild being has uh, has went up yeah yeah uh, happiness factor I don't think is up um, I don't really think health factor is up there's a lot of people popping a lot of pharmaceuticals out there it's just the metrics are horrendous horrendous and if you extrapolate all that into the limits it's disaster right everybody in here needs to read manufacturing consent as mandatory homework do you like to play call of duty you should stream that i played before a long time ago i'm not playing any games right now man aluk alusiard chicho just stopping by to thank you for all the videos about world politics and philosophy i am set to fly out to teach english in moscow in a month for one year nice one plus years hoping to expand my understanding of the world and people around me oh dude awesome i'm going to moscow eh i'd like to visit moscow one day just a history of moscow uh amazing right and the people living there and it's a hub there's so many different international communities from what i understand there good luck with you man and it's my pleasure by the way sharing what i can as much as i can uh i i appreciate the platforms to be able to share this stuff right <laughs> 
not that kind of channel at some point we might do the gaming stream once i get back into it i promise that i would um and i have an idea that i want to do but i'm not in it, in in it yet i just watched the movie life as a house i like that okay wait can i ask a question sure steve conforto chicho what comics you pulling at the moment um i'm pulling all the valiants i'm pulling venom i'm pulling uh immortal hulk i'm pulling all of the um uh what do you call it uh the i forget the name of the company then there's a comic book company that came out about a couple of years ago where they're charging uh, anywhere either a dollar or dollar fifty for all their comics they're printing on newsprint so I'm pulling all their comics uh, ultra all alternate comics so I'm pulling all the comics from alternate comics okay I'm pulling some uh, image stuff that I just see on the shelf uh, am I pulling I'm not really pulling I'm also pulling I'm also pulling all the true believers everything true believers I'm pulling right this Marvel Comics is one dollar comics that they reprint you know important issues like this is the first appearance of Daredevil uh, sorry first appearance of Purple Man Daredevil number four uh, so Marvel true believers I'm pulling uh, DC DC's DC's one dollar comics so reprints of important key issues right I'm pulling like one dollar dc comics that are reprints so i'm just reading a lot of random stuff um that's what i'm pulling mainly alternative not not dc or marvel i don't have any dc that i'm pulling right now i have come to know what one plus one is <laughs> some people say two hey chicho what's gogo -Go boy about gogo -Go boy is a comic book that I published it's a here let me give you a lowdown on Google boy uh, so let me read this monkas my favorite comic beans my favorite comic was hot stuff ah you have some original hot stuff comics uh, beans really that was your favorite comic with the devil little blue devil I'm uh, not blue red devil kid hot stuff a little red devil was like a 10 cent co dude I bought some file copies of hot stuff that I have in my collection that are like high grade I, I bought them a few years ago <laughs> I've never read it I just like it right I, I don't know how many I have I have maybe 10 20 no, I got more than that uh, 15 20 of file copies that are like minimum grade is like 9 9.4 or so let's do a impromptu comic stream <laughs> we're at the end of the we're into two hours are you keeping up with how the dnc and the meteor are treated yeah dante horrendous horrendous and they call this democracy it's insane right oh my god your comics are not in in a cell phone no they are worth half not doesn't make a difference yeah you worn down a house and there was a chest but they stuck and had stunk and had water damage and i know that is not good for you no not good for yourself but good for reading oh oh chicho followed your la lamb stew video and made dinner for my parents when visiting them this weekend it turned out great awesome nice olive thanks for the recipe my pleasure i'm glad you guys liked it i'll post some photos i took the process and uh, of the finished product on discord if you want yes please olive please seriously is the valiant stuff like the new bloodshot and rise series if so what do you think i haven't read them i'm pulling them all right there, there are comics i'm pulling but i don't get a chance to read everything i'm pulling right right now i'm mainly reading the one dollar reprints of historical issues important key issues but i'm pulling all valiants i i will continue to pull all valiants i love that universe all right I think the general public are beginning to understand that mainstream media is full of shit. About time, Zara. Please prove there's infinite primes. Uh, if there are infinite numbers, there were. Actually, I don't know if the proof exists if there's an infinite primes. Uh, what was that one question? Uh, there was one question here. I'm trying to. I was going to get to it, but I forgot. Let's do a. 
Oh, Google Boy. Okay, let me tell you what Google Boy is about. Who asked that, by the way? Uh, Intelligent Blueberry. This is the story of Google Boy. He's a speedster. Okay, he's based in Vancouver. Okay, it's he's the first uh, LGBT good comic book series that was a continuing series that we tried to pull up put out right superhero comic book series so first lgbt superhero comic book series right so there's gogo -Go boy in it there's uh invisible lesbian in it there's a whole bunch of lgbt comic book uh comic book superhero characters it's a continuous story arc and he's a speedster and he's fighting against check this out fighting against and the arch enemy let's say not fighting against, but the arch enemy is a, a corporation called crap okay that is buying out real estate right and we put this in, in this out in the 90s right uh, buying out real estate and evicting tenants to build huge complexes collect tons of rent and they hire people out to kill to s spread viruses and stuff like this it's basically the lgbt community represented in superhero comic book format with not the lgbt but it is the lgbt community the huge uh conversation through the lgbt community because google boy was created by uh, uh neil johnson and he's from the lgbt community it was my first exposure to the lgbt community it was amazing uh i i could go off on it right and i will at some point so it's the first uh <laughs> lgbt uh superhero comic book series that was put out and i put it out yes or we put it out right i published it and neil johnson was working on it right starting to see bernie popularity increase the more he's attacked yeah i'm seriously pro, pro bernie now and tulsi gabbard right of course tulsi gabbard from the get-go and i, I like bernie sanders in 2016 and stuff but he got railroaded and he didn't stand up for it and he's being railroaded now and he's not he needs to at some point you first rule of business first rule of business right if you are being bullied don't cower in front of bullies that's a lesson i learned when i was young right when you're getting bullied you stand up high you stand up strong and you make sure no matter how hard they beat you they're gonna get hurt right and most bullies don't like being hurt no matter how much pain they're delivering somebody else they still don't like a they don't like being hurt right bernie needs to stand up for himself and for the rest of everybody is it so cold in canada or why do you always wear that hat i like that and it is cold i want to get into valiant where would you recommend um james david sutton i would recommend reading <laughs> if you like uh, team superhero read the 2012 relaunch of harbinger if you like science fiction with space adventures and stuff read the 2012 exo man of war series if you like humor conspiracy like amazing humor it's one of my favorite series of all time read the art the 2012 archer and armstrong series if you like science fiction rye is a great place to be if you like bloodshot like if you know bloodshot read the either the harbinger wars 2012 bloodshot series or the 2014 or 2014 or bloodshot reborn series uh, almost like 95 percent of what valiant puts out is amazing it's the that's the reason i'm pulling all valiants the quality of books uh percentage of amazing books is huge last comic uh, i watched was rick and morty rick and morty last animation hmm. crap reminds me of someone <laughs> got to get ready for bed good night chicho and everyone at chat. good night dante thank you for being here and i think we're going to call the stream we've been uh, over a couple of hours night but zara says yeah yeah chicho you've got to watch uh secular talk on youtube i've seen some of it the host is always calling for bernie to hit back yeah it a uh, secular talk i watched some of it it pops up on my thing but i don't follow it uh destiny was awesome 
destiny, destiny, destiny. Is that, uh, if that's a comic book thing, uh, that would be Sandman series. Anyway, gang, thank you for being here. Let's call it a stream. We've been going at this for a couple hours. Okay. And uh, good night, Olive. Good night. Thanks for hanging around. And thank you for the conversations, everyone. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the uh, subscribes. Thank you for the bits. Uh, Destiny is Valiant. Destiny is Valiant. Destiny, Destiny. It's not a series. It's a character, right? Great stream. Thanks, James. Take care. Take care, Hazardous. Take care, everyone. I'll look into it, Zara. Destiny. I'm bad with names, man. It's not a series. You mean Divinity. Zara, you mean Divinity, not Destiny. Oh, no. Destiny came after Divinity. Was it Destiny? <laughs> I can't remember now. Anyway, gang, I'll announce the next streams. Look for the next streams next weekend. Okay. This week, I'm going to be pretty busy with my students and whatnot. And I'll try to get to editing. Uh, I might pull something out of this stream. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic week. Okay. Bye, everyone.